Let's talk briefly about what happens when your signal leaves QSYS and is sent to your amplifiers and loudspeakers. Now, if you aren't using data port amplifiers, then the signal path in your design ends at the output I.O. card, and after that, it's on its own. However, if you're using QSC amplifiers with data port connections, then you can continue to monitor your signal and amplifier status. And the same goes for QSC loudspeakers. With amplifiers and loudspeakers by QSC, the system already knows how to tune your signal to your gear using intrinsic correction, which automatically voices your speakers to their absolute best performance. However, you may occasionally be faced with the prospect of using non-QSC equipment. Personally, I can't think of any situation when this would be advisable. Nope, not one. But I thought I'd walk you through the process anyway. If you're using non-QSC loudspeakers that are being powered by a QSC amplifier with data port, you can use the custom voicing component to tune your loudspeaker according to the manufacturer's specification. Now, on the QSYS side, this is actually pretty easy. You'll go to your inventory, click the plus icon, select loudspeaker, and then add a generic speaker, either high or low impedance, and then drag it into your schematic. Simply wire this to your data port enabled amplifier the way you would any other loudspeaker. You'll also want to add a custom voicing component, which you'll also find in your inventory, which is where you'll input all the tuning data for that loudspeaker. Now the tricky part, getting the information for this voicing. <laughs> you'll need to consult your loudspeaker spec sheet, or their website, or sometimes even hound the manufacturer in order to get this tuning information. Unfortunately, every manufacturer lists this information in a different way, and quite frankly, you may not be able to find it at all. But We've got some Brand X loudspeakers that we're going to add, and we found the spec sheet data and the tuning data from the website. So we're going to show you how to input this data once you've found it. If you want to follow along with us, you can download this mock spec sheet from our course resource section. Now, the first thing you want to do is make sure that the generic speaker component is configured for the data. According to the spec sheet, we need two bands for our loudspeakers, and we'll have to find the following information for each band. Band 1 is a low frequency with an impedance of 8 ohms, RMS power of 800 watts, voice coil diameter of 35 millimeters, and that is not a compression driver. The high frequency band is also 8 ohms, 75 watts, 75 millimeter voice coil, and that is a compression driver. We specified that this speaker has two bands, so let's make sure we wire the amplifier to both channels now that there are two pins available. Now before we configure the custom voicing block, let's remind ourselves of one very important thing about data port connections. Every data port connection between a data port out card and an amplifier carries two channels of audio. You'll notice that this amplifier has two data port input pins, but four output pins. If you hover your mouse over these pins, you'll see that data port pin 1 carries audio channel 1 and 2, and data port pin 2 carries audio channels 3 and 4. So we only need one wire to provide all of the audio for this generic speaker. But in order for that one wire to carry two channels of audio, you need to populate channels 1 and 2 of the data port card. Don't be fooled by thinking that you only need one wire coming in just because there's one wire going out. That wire going out even looks different. It has a double line to remind you that it carries two channels. So be sure to connect two audio channels for the first data port connection, and all four channels if you're using both data port connections. All right, let's apply our custom voicing to our loudspeaker now. So first, click on its custom voicing component and go to its properties, and change the band count to two and we'll change the name of the speaker to Speaker X. Over on the Speaker X loudspeaker component, let's be sure to use that voicing. The speaker and the voicing are two separate components, so you only have to do the voicing once, even if you use multiple instances of the loudspeaker. Furthermore, if you ever need to adjust the voicing later on, those changes will automatically be applied to every loudspeaker component that this voicing is applied to. Now let's double click the voicing component to configure it properly. We can't see this in design mode, so let's go ahead and enter emulation mode. Each band has a lot of different information to fill out. You just need to be patient and find the right information. 
The first band is our LF, which we can see in our first column. You don't need to change the gain from zero. We set the delay to 0.18 milliseconds, and we keep the polarity at normal. On the high pass, the frequency is 62.5 hertz with a Butterworth slope of 18. And the low pass, the frequency is 1.0 kilohertz with a Butterworth frequency of 18 as well. Now pay close attention to this. This is really important. These pink bypass buttons are active, which means that all of the information you just entered is being completely ignored. By default, everything in the custom voicing block is inactive. So you have to choose which element you want to use. So I will deactivate the bypass buttons, which makes our crossover data now active. The same is true in our voicing filters. These buttons on the left are bypass buttons. And once again, every filter defaults to being bypassed. The first thing you have to do is deactivate the bypass so that your voicing filter data will be used. I know it sort of looks like you're turning a filter off by turning off a button, but just remember that you're turning off the bypass, which means that you're making the filter active. All right, let's add this data. The first filter has a gain of negative 2.4 dB, a frequency of 4 to 1 hertz, and a width of, uh-oh, now look what we have here. You have to input the frequency range width as an octave ratio, but sometimes you may receive the information in iterations of Q rather than octave width. But don't fret, you can easily search for a Q converter online and input the Q number to receive the octave equivalent. Now our low frequency band is complete. You would repeat this process for a high frequency band, and you'll notice that this one uses two parametric EQ, so you would have to activate a second parametric curve on that band and input the info for both of them. And yes, this takes a while, and it may be pretty frustrating. So really, you should just use QSC loudspeakers. All this info is taken care of automatically thanks to the power of intrinsic correction. So, good luck and thanks for watching.